Hey, what's going on guys? Sean here, living the corporate pilot life. Got a quick Tech Tuesday video for you guys on one that seems to be asked quite a bit, and that is what is that little green screen right in front of our face under the glare shield? Uh, that is called the display controller, and I'm gonna show you guys some of the functions of it. There's a lot to it, so I'm not gonna go through the whole thing today. It would take like two hours to do so, but I'll give you some of the basic functions of what it does and what we can use it for. So check it out. All right, so here it is, display controller. Uh, pretty easy little uh, little thing to work. It's just got several buttons over here and then uh, several functions for each, uh, each setting. So if you go over here to the map button, which we are already on, notice we've got several different functions that we can use. Uh, we can add a bearing, we can bring up waypoints, nav aids, airports, stuff like that. That's where we can get our GPWS to show up down here on this screen. Not, nothing's gonna happen right now because we don't have the IRSs lined up, but that's where it would show up select TCAS, vertical profile, all this kind of stuff can be selected or deselected from the map mode. Compass brings the compass up down here. We don't really use that too often. We pretty much stay in the map mode. Gives us that one. Plan mode will show you your flight plan. Again, I don't have anything loaded, but if I did, it would show you your full flight plan down here. Uh, we'll leave it in map. Uh, nav function, this is where we can select if we want FMS or nav source. Nav will be things like ILS, VOR, NDB, things like that. FMS is obviously coming from the FMS and then basically GPS. If we keep moving across here, sensor. This is all of the different sensors that input things for our, uh, our avionics. IRS's digital air data computer, radio altimeter, DAU one and two, which is data acquisition unit. That's for the engines, if you will. Uh, fault warning computer, flight guidance computer, and auto throttle computer. So we have uh, dual, sometimes triple redundancy for all of these items. So if one fails, we can switch to the other and we can read off of the other side. Makes it super easy. The way it works is on the right side, which I'm in the right seat right now, it stays on number two. Uh, the left seat stays on number one for all of this stuff so that we can uh, operate separately and have two different sources of information at all times. If we keep moving over here to flight reference, that's where we get our V speeds, our reference speed comes in over here. All that stuff gets auto-filled as, it, it, uh, as the computer does its thing. Uh, as our speed and our weights change, things like that, we will uh, see those numbers change around for us. TRS, thrust setting, that gives us our uh, EPR speed, our EPR settings for various uh, conditions. Takeoff, climb, cruise, and uh, max continuous uh, thrust, that will uh, all be there and it changes based on several factors, temperature being one of the biggest ones. And then we can go to auto or manual if we, uh, if we need to. System, this one right here we use quite a bit. We can select what system we want to show on the center screen. So notice I've got hydraulic up right now, and there is our hydraulic page. If I come back over here and I select fuel, there is our fuel page, and so on and so forth. Engine start, that one have, we use that one on every engine start, gives us all the information we need while we're starting the engines. Pretty easy, uh, self-explanatory right there. Also, this is where we get our checklist. We don't really use it on this airplane because it's not up to date, but if we did, that's where it would be. You noticed on, uh, on my last airplane, we use that all the time. Uh, moving on, test function. We can test all kinds of stuff, and you guys have wanted to know what this one does, the AOA. That one tests the, uh, the stick shaker and stick pusher. The, uh, it, yeah, the, the stick shaker should start to shake here. It's not gonna push because we don't have hydraulics on it, but that's the shaker. Essentially, that is a jet's version of a stall warning system. So if we ever feel that while we're flying, something is going wrong. Uh, we can test our EFIS system. So over here, you notice we get all the X's on our EFIS. ICAST test, if I hit that one, we get our ICAST, all the red messages pop up over there. Autopilot disconnect, things like that. Um, radio altimeter test, auto throttle disconnect. We can hit all those as needed. And then the last button, display. This one we don't use too often uh, for the uh, flight, uh, uh, flight command bars. If you go to single Q or cross pointer, notice that the military guys like this one, the, the cross pointer. Most of us use the single Q, which is the typical uh, V bars that you're used to seeing. You can go to calibrated airspeed versus Mach, metric altitude if you go to a country that uses metric, and then the barrel in inches or, uh, or uh, millibars. We do use that when we go to Europe. Anytime we cross over, we gotta switch over to millibars and uh, notice we went to millibars down here. We'll leave it in inches since that's where it needs to be. Also, you can use this one to bring up a bearing pointer. Nothing's gonna happen right now again because the IRSs aren't lined up, so it's not gonna actually do anything. So that is the display controller. 
So that's it, pretty uh, straightforward system, very easy to use, just a lot of buttons to press and knowing which one to press to get what you wanna know. So uh, hopefully you learned a little something, hopefully th those of you that have been asking about it are pleased with it, if not, let me know, we'll record some more stuff. So uh, give me the thumbs up, hit subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you on the next one. Keep living the corporate pilot life.